call the Planning Commission agenda regular meeting to order. Can we please stand for the flag salute? Let's begin with the roll call. Yes, thank you. Commissioner Lopez? Oh, here. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Sanchez? Here. Commissioner Quill? Here. Commissioner Liang? Here. Chair Jones? Present. Commissioner Wilbert? Here. Commissioner Ruiz? Here. Okay, Vice Chair Daly and Commissioner Durr are excused. We have quorum. Thank you. Moving forward, uh, the administration of oath. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak on any public agenda items? Please stand at this time to be sworn in. I see no one, so we will be moving forward. Public comments for items not on the agenda. Is there anyone wishing to speak on a matter that is not on the agenda? I see no parties interested. We will be moving forward. Uh, consent agenda. Consent items are, cons are considered routine in nature and may be enacted in one motion. All public and non-public hearings will be opened at one time. Any item may be discussed separately upon request of a member of the Planning Commission or a member of the public. Does the staff have any updates to the consent calendar? Yes, good evening, Honorable Chairman and Commissioners. Um, for the consent calendar this evening, we have um, item number one, which is the approval of the minutes for the meeting of December 11th of 2018. Our recommendation is to approve those as submitted. Item number two involves real property street vacation number 15.30-429, which is a request to allow street vacations of portions of West Broadway, West Main Street, and North I Street as depicted on plan number 13218. The project is located on the north, on the, excuse me, on the south side of West Third Street, adjacent to the frontage road against the uh, 215 freeway. Item number three is uh, real vacation property number 15.30-430, which is another request to allow the street vacation of portion of Little Mountain Court, as depicted on Plan Number 13241. And this project site is located on the northeast corner of Little Mountain Court and 27th, West 27th Street. Our recommendation is that be approved as well. Item number four is extension of time number 18-09, which is originally a, re it's a request for a one-year extension. This is their, um, their first ex request for extension on this project. It is for conditional use permit number 15-16, which was the approval to allow the addition of a modular building for a preschool at the um, Generations Church of San Bernardino. Item number five is extension of time number 1811. This is the second request for extension, and this is a one-year extension for tentative track map number 16910 and the development permit 14-08. It involves 40, a 43 unit plan unit development project. This is the second request for an extension on this particular item, and this is located on the northwest corner of West Foothill Boulevard and North Terrace Road. That concludes the recommendations for the uh, five consent calendar items. I'd be glad to answer any questions if you have any. Thank you. Commissioner? I do have some questions on item number three, if you will, Oliver. Okay. Um, the street vacation portion of Little Mountain Court, you know, I just don't live too far from there. Coming down Little Mountain, go to the right, and it's Little Mountain Court. That's correct. This says it's on the north east um, part, but I don't recall that Little Mountain Court turns into east of where it goes. Is there a street there? Is Little, that the Little Mountain or? dead ends. Yeah, you're going down Little Mountain, right, and, it and dead we ends. have these little uh, so, small so office buildings on the right-hand side, so there's Little Mountain Court, and you turned in, and it's a cul-de-sac because it was, only, it was set up, I guess, to serve 
those little businesses that are really vacant right now, the so majority. So which portion of the street are we vacating? It's, it's the, it's the cul-de-sac. So where, where the cul-de-sac ends, if you're familiar, mm -hmm. there's a bulb there. Mm -hmm. So the vacation is going to be, there's a, a paper street now that goes from that bulb straight down to the, uh, to 27th Street. So if I may direct you to, um, to the, um, to the exhibit on, on, on item number three, there's an attachment. If you don't mind on the last, on the last page, attachment number C. I don't have that with me here. But that's okay. <laughs> because that little cul-de-sac street, that street seems to serve those small businesses. Okay. Oh, there is no street there. There is. There, there. That's what we call a paper street. <laughs> <laughs> and so. Because it's a cul-de-sac, but there is no. That's no correct. One. And so th th it's basically going to be vacated. This, there is no street there. Um, that'll be vacated, and it'll be uh, utilized to accommodate the development of a commercial office building um, for that for that vacant site there. Okay, to um, the 27th. Okay, so there was supposed to be a street there. A long time ago, there was. And then written. there was never a street. That's correct. In. Okay, are we vacating the street because all that um, land that is there is getting ready for a project? There is one project that's being proposed there. It's a it's a commercial office building. And essentially, where that street, um, the vacation, that will serve as the um, as as parking for the office building, and will, it will also serve as emergency parking for the fire department. Mm -hmm. or, excuse me, access. When you say commercial building for a business or for it's a commercial office building. An office building. Yes. Okay. So you don't want to say who's going to be occupying that office no. building yet until we get that <laughs> project before us. Okay. I understand. Thank you. That You're was welcome. all the questions I had. Does the commission have any further questions for staff at this time? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion that we accept the items uh, listed on the consent calendar as explained to us by the staff. We'll second that. Mm -hmm. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Moving forward, public hearing items. The Planning Commission will first hear a report from staff and then the public hearing will be open. The applicant will have the opportunity to speak. Next members of the public will be allowed to speak. Anyone in the audience wishing to speak must be sworn in and also fill out a request to speak form. The forms are located on the table near the door. When your name is called, come forward, speak into the microphone, say and spell your name and give your address for the taped record. After all have spoken, the applicant will be allowed to respond. The public hearing will then be closed and the planning commission will begin deliberations and make a decision. All actions except general plan amendments and amendments to the Municipal Development Code are final action unless an appeal is filed and a fee, a, a fee is paid within 15 days to the Community Development Department. If you challenge the action of the Planning Commission in court, you may be limited to only raising those issues you or someone else raised at the public hearing described in the agenda or in written correspondence delivered to the Community Development Department at or prior to the public hearing. I hereby open public hearing item number six. Can we please have the staff report? Good evening, yes. Um, item number six is conditional use permit 18-12 and public convenience or necessity uh, letter 18-05. Uh, the proposed project is to uh, modify a previously approved conditional use permit which was conditional use permit 14-08 for the rehabilitation of an existing service station with a convenience store and an existing canopy. The proposal is to establish a uh, new 1,075 square foot drive through car wash as well as establish an ABC type 20 license. The project is located on 1.7 acres within the property at 5985 North Palm Avenue in the Commercial General Zone. 
Here is a location map of the existing site. Uh, here we have the aerial map uh, where we have the existing site. Currently to the south of that you have an existing Denny's, uh, right, located right here. You have a vacant property and a little bit more west to that you have an existing um, JCPenney warehouse and as well it's uh, abutting the 215 freeway. As previously mentioned, the proposal is to modify the previously approved conditional use permit. The previously approved conditional use permit 14-08 was to establish the existing convenience store with canopy and the uh, construction of a 3,294 square foot restaurant. The proposal now is to eliminate that uh, 3,294 square foot restaurant and replace it with a 1,079 square foot drive through car wash. It, the proposal is also to rehabilitate the existing convenience store and canopy that are currently on site. Additionally, they also propose to establish an ABC Type 20 license. The, pro the project site is located within Census Tract 27 I mean 27.06. Currently, the ABC allows for only four uh, licenses to be permitted within that census tract. Uh, they currently have seven active licenses and one surrendered license. Uh, due to the, uh, the amount of active licenses being more than the permitted, they have filed for a public and or convenience necessity letter. And the police department has reviewed the project and they are forwarding a recommendation of approval subject to the listed conditions of approval. Here we have a, the census track. It covers a large geographic area within that census track. Um, and here we call out all the ABC licenses within that census tract, as well as um, within a 1,000 foot radius. We do have two other additional licenses that are not within the census tract, but they are within that 1,000 foot radius. Uh, the nearest sensitive use businesses um, and uses, we have a school, uh, Cesar Chavez Middle School which is located at 6650 North Magnolia Avenue. It's approximately two miles. Uh, we have an existing church, Generations Church, which is located at 6245 Palm Avenue. It's about half a mile. There is also a park, Little League Baseball Park, uh, located at 3496 West Little League Drive. It's approximately one mile away. Uh, we do have a Crest Haven Apartments, for residential homes uh, located at 6155 Palm Avenue and that's approximately half a mile away as well. Within the census tract, we have um, the uh, Shell that is located approximately 7.6 miles away. Uh, Midland Oil uh, as well that is uh, located approximately 7.6 miles away and Sierra Chevron which is approximately 7.6 miles away. Those are located within the city of Fontana uh, but as well, it, it's incorporated within this census tract. We have a Walgreens that's uh, approximately 7.4 miles, as well as uh, a Roth's, a Rite Aid store, and a Grand Liquor gas and fuel station, approximately seven and a half miles away, located within the city of Rialto. Um, and, but they are incorporated within this census tract. Um, additionally, let me just previously also touch on the fact that within 1,000 feet, uh, there is a Arco gas station that has a Type 20 license, and that one is not located within Census Tract 27.06. It's located within Census Tract 45.03, and as well the 7-Eleven that's located within Census Tract 45.05 but it's important for us to bring that up to the commission and make them aware that they are within 1,000 feet of the project site. <coughs> Additionally, uh, traffic did, uh, our traffic engineer did review the project site 
um, and based on the traffic impact analysis that was done for the project, there was no significant impact on the city's roadways or steady intersections with the rehabilitation of the existing sea store and canopy and the construction of the new car wash. Uh, due to it being near the uh, uh, Caltrans right-of-way, Caltrans did also review the uh, traffic initial study and they provided their recommendations as to uh, what uh, they would like for the project to provide. One thing the project they would like to provide is a race medium on Palm Avenue. Uh, let me just get the pointer. So on Palm Avenue, they would like to have a race medium up to the first driveway. So the first driveway is right here. So there's going to be a, a race medium from this point all the way to the first driveway so that they don't do a left turn in. And that should only be right in, right out at the first driveway. Additionally, they did also want to, for them to maximize the right turn pocket to the first driveway. What that means is that they're going to uh, go in, as the a little conceptual uh, shows, is that they're going to be going in to maximize the right turn pocket here. And this is just a conceptual of what it's going to look like once they do that improvement. Uh, here we have a picture of the existing site looking east on North Palm Avenue. Uh, in existing looking west onto the site. The car wash is going to be located to the rear of the convenience store. So previously, the restaurant was going to be constructed uh, back at the rear, but now it's going to be, re be replaced with the car wash. Here we have a site plan of the proposed. So and then we have the proposal for the landscaping. Due to the uh, right turn pocket construction, that's going to be affecting some of the landscaping here at the frontage, but we're still going to have enough landscaping at the rear and then some la landscaping in front of the canopy area, which is going to assist with the architectural design. These are the elevations of the proposed uh, car wash and as you can see it is going to be uh, compatible with the existing convenience store that we have on site. Um, in conclusion, uh, the planning division supports the request of the type 20 license based on the recommendation of the approval by the city's police department and although the overall census tract is over concentrated with also ABC license the subject census tract covers a large geographic area. Uh, therefore, the recommendation is for the Planning Commission to adopt resolution number 2019-006, finding the categorical exemption and approving conditional use permit 18-12 and letter of public convenience or necessity 18-05 based on findings of fact and subject to the recommended conditions of approval. If you have any questions, the applicant is here um, and I'm able to answer any uh, also questions as well. Thank you. Does the commission have any questions for staff at this time? Sure. Commissioner Lane? Yeah, this just uh, goes to your <coughs> um, Just clarification. So the original or the, C, the C, uh, CUP 1408 approval included the restaurant and the service station? That's correct. Uh, oh. Thank you. Sorry. Um, yes, yeah, so the original approval was for the rehabilitation of the sea store and the canopy and the construction of the restaurant. So this really, sea store does not include the service station. I just want to make sure. Yes, yeah, so it was going to be, um, I'm so sorry. So it was the rehabilitation of the service station, which had the sea store uh, with the canopy and uh, the construction of the restaurant. Okay, so my understanding is that, um, that the site has been abandoned for over 10 years 
and the tanks have been removed for the fire department, uh, you know, the underground tanks have been removed. So the new service station under the CUP 1408 would reinstall those tanks to establish the site as a service station? Yes, sir, that's correct. Thank you. Commissioner Lopez. I have a question. Um, do you have in your report any information from the state alcohol beverage control as to what is the density in for this area for alcohol outlets? Yes, I do have that information what in my that? report. Um, so they're allowed to have four licenses for off sale. And what do they have now currently, before this? Before this, currently right now there's a seven active, one surrendered, and with this one that's going to be an additional license. So that's going to be uh, seven, yeah, total seven. <coughs> and ABC is recommending four for um, this area. And they're, they're leaving it up to the city. That is why the applicant applied for the public. The letter of convenience. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, I understand that. Yes. But uh, there is a reason why they are recommending they're, so they're many. Rec yes, they, they are. Uh, even though the, uh, there are many active off-sale licenses, it's a large geographic area uh, that covers not only the city of San Bernardino, but also covers Rialto and, and also the city of Fontana. So it's a large geographic census tract. Um, so they are, uh, oh, they are leaving it up to us for recommendation, but they are comfortable with allowing an additional license. And what is the city, what is your department stand on, well, you're obviously recommending a letter of convenience, so the recommendation is it's we, not too many. Yes, we are, we are recommending for the approval based on the police review of the uh, crime statistics and, um, and based on their recommendation, they recommended for approval of the license. On whose recommendation? The police? The, the police department, that mm -hmm. is correct, yes. Okay. Just follow up to my colleague's comment regarding police uh, comments concerns the fact that it abuts the freeway adjacent immediately to the on ramp. There was no comments or concerns um, expressed by the police department in any way, shape, or form. I no. mean, this is really, I mean, you can grab a pack and then just be on the road, be on the freeway right there, just zoom out. Um, was there any concerns about just proxy to that uh, on ramp? There were there were no concerns that were mentioned uh, by the police department. Mm. Thank you. Does the commission have any further questions for staff? I do. I I was just wondering what future plans are. Are there any future plans for this geographic area, and is the proposal consistent with any future plans? Is it residential that's planned to go in here eventually, or? Uh, there are some residential that is being proposed. Let me just pull up an aerial map, the aerial map. I'm, I'm so sorry, it's, I didn't end up putting, but to the north of the 215 freeway, there is a large area that is going to be proposed for some new residential as well as uh, mixed commercial as part of the project, and that's going to be north of the 215 freeway on Palm and Little League Drive. Within this vicinity, uh, there is n uh, that's all commercially zoned and industrial zone, so no residential would be permitted within that vicinity, only to the north of that. You're welcome. Yes, um, we've gone through this with, before with some car washes. Have, uh, has there been a, uh, any kind of a sound study made, now that we're bringing up more residential in the area, uh, a sound study of uh, what be, could be an impact on this? The residential is a little bit farther than that. It's uh, um, approximately... Um, the, the resident, the, essentially the freeway the separates the commercial and industrial 
um, areas. So, um, so that, that analysis was not required. As, um, as Elizabeth mentioned, everything on the south side of the 215 freeway is either industrial or commercial, and the, the residential is on the, is on the opposite side of the freeway. So to answer your question, there was not a noise study for that particular reason. So there's not a requirement. There. That's correct. Thank you. Does the commission have any further questions for staff? Does the applicant or is anyone in the audience willing to speak on agenda item number six? Hello, sir. Have you been sworn in? Okay, we'll get that done first and then. Okay. Please proceed. raise your right hand. Do you solemnly affirm that the testimony you are about to give before this body will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, please say I do. I do. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Can you please state your name and address for the taped record? Gary Miller with Miller Architectural Corporation, Redlands, California. And uh, I, I re represent the applicant. The applicant also is here. The owners are here, as well as uh, Chris Hart, another uh, member of my firm. I'd uh, be happy to answer any questions, and I do have a brief opening statement, if I may. Um, we, uh, we'd like to point out that we see this as a beneficial project for the city. Uh, this was a use that was previously approved and, and operated in this location, and unfortunately, due to the uh, recession, uh, it became inoperative and, and has been a vacant piece of property and actually an eyesore for some time. It has uh, attracted vagrants. Uh, the previous owners have, or, I mean, the current owners are relatively new and, and have demonstrated uh, an intent to restore the property and bring it back to viability. Uh, so we think it will become once again a vibrant area complement to the uh, to the restaurant adjacent to it. <clears throat> I'd like to point out that the uh, the car wash produces less a, a lower noise level than the freeway does. So we we think uh, we'll be fine with respect to noise. Um, I appreciate Commissioner Liang's uh, concern with respect to security and. The ability, uh, I, I think, police often has expressed a concern that uh, a, uh, a a thief will uh, hit a convenience store and then immediately get onto the freeway, um, and it's it's sort of a, a catch-22 situation. The best location for convenience stores and gas stations is next to the freeway. They're convenient, uh, and that's where we need them to be so we can can use the services that they offer. Uh, so we do appreciate the police. Uh, being supportive of this project. Um, we finally would like to point out uh, the, the, left, the right turn pocket that has been proposed is quite an expensive undertaking for this property owner. Uh, it requires the moving of a power pole, a, <clears throat> excuse me, not a power pole, a traffic signal pole, a, an existing uh, signal control box and a Caltrans utility box. We estimate that that's going to be approaching $200,000 in cost. Uh, that's quite a lot of cost for one site to undertake, particularly as when the traffic impact report stated uh, we have a very minimal impact on the traffic condition that exists there now. Uh, we understand that this is a condition imposed by Caltrans and it's really not something that the city has much influence over. Uh, so we would like to appeal to the, uh, uh, to the city to relieve some of the imp traffic impact fees that are imposed on this site due to the fact that they're really improving the traffic substantially by, by, by uh, putting in both the median and the right turn pocket. And um, e even though they're not the, uh, the land use that's contributing to the problem. So with that, be happy to answer any questions. Um, I have a, a question in regards to their request um, <coughs> about the improvement fees. Um, I'm assuming our traffic engineer or department um, is the one requesting these studies, so I'm assuming that they're justifying 
So there, there was a, um, a report that was a, done, a, a traffic impact analysis. It's, it went through a, a few versions of it. Um, Caltrans made some initial comments as it relates to um, kind of the, the traffic impacts just at that intersection in general. I think that for all of us that have driven over there, we, we know what that congestion is like. Um, I think this was a, a project maybe where Caltrans, will say, put their foot down if you will, and they, and they commented. I will say that they did um, make some, um, a, a little bit of concession in terms of, um, of allowing the project to move forward and, and it really becomes an opening day type of situation. Um, as, as it relates to the um, applicant's request, um, the Planning Commission does not have the ability or authority to, to waive um, fees. Um, so the proper uh, procedure would be that should the, uh, should the Commission be inclined to approve the project, subject to the recommended conditions of approval, it would then be up to the applicant to file an appeal to, to the condition as it relates to impact fees to request that, that waiver. So this isn't something that we would be able to address in this type of venue? That's correct. Okay, perfect. Uh, does the commission have any questions for the applicant at this time? Or? Yeah, just a quick question, follow up on um, Mr. Oliver's comments about the impact fees. Do you know what that amounts to in terms of dollar value, uh, what is that? I don't know if it was calculated yet. I know that that question was asked earlier. I'm not, do we know, Alex? Uh, we have not, uh, the fees have not been calculated yet. Excuse me, Chairman and Commissioners, uh, good evening. Um, but uh, I believe that this, the traffic report that was done by the applicant, it shows a share of about 6000 Eight hundred and fifty dollars. That is that is the fair share of the project to global, you know, of, of future impact that is going to be happening with this. Is their contribution to it, percentage-wise. So that is something that is, like I said, you know, we we can have that request to the city council for the uh, removal of these fees. But we have not calculated the impact fee yet. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So that's something that can be addressed at a later date then, basically. So the at council, this point, um, if there are no more comments from the applicant or any more questions from the commission, I'll entertain a motion. Just one applicant. We brought this up. I mean, just one comment from the applicant. We brought this up to preserve our appeal rights on this subject. That's the only reason I brought it up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, definitely. Um, I just had a quick comment. Oh, I just wanted to say um, thank you for proposing this project. Um, I mean, we pass by on several areas and several corners of San Bernardino, blighted areas, places have been closed because of the recession. So thank you for uh, having faith and putting something in there, and hopefully it'll all work out well, and thank you. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Do we have a motion? Yeah, I'll make the motion. I'll second that. Okay. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion carries unanimously. <laughs> Moving on to agenda item number seven, conditional use permit 18-03. I hereby open. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I will have to abstain from that item as I'm related to that industry. No problem. Thank you. Let the record reflect Commissioner Quell is away. All right. Condition, conditional use permit 18-04. Uh, okay. Um, let's have the uh, staff report. Yes, sir. Uh, conditional use 18-04 is a proposal for a freestanding electronic message center sign approximately 47 feet in height, uh, total sign face, and it's a double face, split face sign. Um, each face will be approximately 672 square feet. Um, that is kind of standard for the EMC signs in that area. Uh, so 14 by um, 48 feet. 
It will also include um, one sign panel double-sided for on-site advertisement of the approved use um, at that location, which is a 7-Eleven um, gas station um, that was approved a few months ago. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see from this uh, aerial, but you can see kind of how the split face will angle out um, over the top of the property on the site plan. Uh, basic characteristics, it's going to be stucco based with uh, also some additional um, kind of stonework on the, on the base. You've got the static sign, the EMC electronic message center sign, um, and some uh, features uh, for the city name and city seal um, so that this sign can act as kind of a gateway into the city um, because this location is um, identified by the general plan as a gateway um, into the city. Uh, you can see roughly kind of the, the renderings of how um, the sign would look um, approaching it from um, various sections on the freeway. This is the condition of the current site. Um, this is roughly the location of where the sign would be. Um, looking from across the street from the Arco station. Um, and then just another north side. Um, additionally, I just wanted to add that um, the sign will also be subject to a licensing agreement, um, which will cover um, like airtime for the city, revenues for the city, um, advertising for city events, um, that sort of uh, situation. Maybe some um, uh, content, um, regulating some of the content of what can be advertised on the sign. Um, and that will be approved by city council at a later date. Uh, so the recommendation tonight is for the Planning Commission to adopt resolution 2019-005 and find uh, the approval of conditional use permit 18-04 to be categorically exempt from CEQA pursuant to section 15303 for new construction or conversion of small structures and section 15311 uh, for accessory structures of the CEQA guidelines and approve conditional use permit 18-04 based on the findings of fact and subject to the conditions of approval. I can take any questions. Thank you. Does the commission have any questions for staff? Commissioner? Let me uh, understand. <clears throat> the council will approve everything that's on the sign, everything that is put on it or as, as it comes up. Yes. The, the licensing agreement is really the only way that we can regulate any of the content of the sign. Um, so otherwise, any sign uh, is not subject to uh, um, any kind of regulation in terms of content. Generally, we look at um, location, size, um, you know, time, place, manner, um, sorts of situations. Um, but through the licensing agreement, um, that is where we have a little bit more flexibility in the content regulation. So that's in its total entirety. It's not just part time or I don't know. I'm just. So the council, really going this, the council does have full authority of it. Yes. Okay. Also, uh, there's a lot of other signs that have come up in that area. Where is that in relationship to uh, a number, of, especially with that new one that came up? Sure. Uh, so the closest um, EMC signs to there, there's one approximately. Um, I think 2,500-ish feet or so to the south um, where the uh, Toyota dealership is. Um, so that sign is, is the closest. Um, there is another one maybe um, across the freeway from there, so maybe an additional 500 feet. Um, and then north of there, the closest sign is the Chaparral EMC sign um, at Chaparral Motorsports. Um, and that's um, a little over 4,000 feet, I believe, away. Um, and our code allows the EMC signs to be a maximum, or uh, sorry, a minimum of 1,000 feet uh, in distance from each other. So it's well within the regulations. Thank you. You're welcome. Does the commission have any further questions for staff? Commissioner Wine. 
Do you know if Caltrans uh, has reviewed this proposal? Is that something that they have they have they have looked at the proposal. We don't have an actual approval letter from them yet, but that will be that is a condition of approval um, that we will need that before we can uh, move forward with the licensing agreement. But they are aware of this sign. They've taken a look at it um, and taken a look at the um, lighting study. So. All right, let's open a public comments. Uh, I have a speaker request for a Claude Althea. Am I, am I pronouncing that right? Have you been sworn in? No, I haven't. Oh, okay. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly affirm that the testimony you are about to give before this body will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, please say I do. I do. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Please say your name and give your address for the taped record. Yes, Claude Elena, uh, 1754 Albright Avenue, Upland, California. I'm working with the applicant, Alex Musino. Uh, we're the sign company that would be uh, doing the sign. Um, structure itself um, and uh, building it, op operating it, et cetera, et cetera. So we're here basically to answer any questions that you might have as for the uh, pertaining to the operation of the sign or any other questions that you might have. Does the commission have any questions for the applicant at this time? I think it's a nice sign, very aesthetically <laughs> pleasing. I like how the seal and the city of San Bernardino is incorporated in there. I think that'll be a nice icon for people seeing as they're traveling on the freeway. So, well, thank um, you. You can you can thank your planning staff for, oh, well, for all their direction. Thank you. We appreciate that. So, Just doing my job. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, I think we're good here. All right. I, I actually live in the third ward, so I'll probably be seeing that sign quite often as I'm driving the 215, getting off of Inland Center. Um, so I was definitely kind of seeing where it was at. I drove by to make sure kind of what it would look like. And uh, I think it'll be really nice, and I do agree with the sign that says San Bernardino. It'll be really nice. Great. Thank okay. you. What's the uh, estimated uh, timeline for construction and getting everything started? And Well, there's a few other hurdles we're going to have to go through City Council. Uh, we'll have to get uh, the licensing agreement done and all that. I'm going to say uh, six to eight months. It's up to the applicant, but that's probably a realistic time. It does take time to get through all the paperwork and the other approvals. Definitely. Well, we appreciate your addition to the city, and, and thank you for coming to speak with us and, and your support of this item. Um, thank you. I'll entertain a motion at this time. I'll motion. We have a motion. Seconded. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Congratulations. All right, moving forward. Agenda item number eight, extension of time 18-08 and amendment of conditions. 18-03, uh, uh, let the record reflect Commissioner Quell is back. Can we please have the staff report? Yes. Yes, good evening, Commissioners. On this item, the extension of time is for the uh, tentative track map 16-794. And this is the, uh, after a se this project was originally approved in December of 2009 by the Mayor and City Council. Um, th since then, there was a series of uh, state legislation that gave them automatic extensions, if you will. This is the third requested extension from the city of San Bernardino that we'll be processing. They we're also, in addition to the extension, we're also um, processing uh, an amendment to the conditions of approval. As you recall, we mentioned, uh, I think, a couple of meetings ago that the council's directive was to start switching our subdivisions from um, 
maintenance landscape districts to community facilities facilities districts so that's what we're doing in, co in, in, in concert with extension of times as we bring them forward so that's what we're doing here the, uh, the public works department they work with the uh, with the applicants on their subdivisions to ensure um, what needs to be included or, or switched over and those kinds of things this particular item the um, the reason for the uh, the landscape maintenance district originally was because there was a it was in the high fire zone so there was some some um, regulations that it needed to cover through that because of the redesign of the project and some new procedures and policies of county fire that is that is no longer needed so um, in this particular case we're we're just eliminating the landscape maintenance district um, you know altogether so this project involves a total of 18 and a half approximately 18 and a half acres it'll have 43 single family lots and there'll be a debris basin um, as part of the project it's located on the west side of North Palm Avenue north of Vermont Drive and it's within the residential low zone this is an exhibit that shows the uh, the uh, the zoning for the area again the entire area surrounding it is um, residential this is an, an aerial of, of the property as you can see it's undeveloped there's residential homes to the uh, to the east or south whichever direction is twisted around but to the right of the slide this is the subdivision um, of the project and um, uh, again so it, it's uh, nothing has changed with the design of the project it still has originally been a, a bit was proposed and our recommendation is that the um, Planning Commission adopt resolution 2019-07 finding that the extension and the amendment to conditions are categorically exempt and approve the extension of time and amendment to conditions 18-03 subject to the findings of fact and the con recommended conditions of approval I'd be glad to answer any questions the applicant is here and we have Alex here from the Public Works Department if you have further questions as it relates to the um, the removal of the landscape district thank you thank you does the Commission have any questions for staff at this time Commissioner. Following up on Mr. Oliver's comment, um, so I'm looking at the conditions of approval that's being proposed to eliminate. So it's not just landscape maintenance. So you have field modification zone, you've got debris basin and access, and then three southern boundary retaining wall slopes and access and lighting. Um, so what are we proposing in lieu of these remedies in place now? Um, if we to remove the these requirements the condition of approval is to uh, for the landscape maintenance for the fuel modification zone I believe uh, all the other all the rest and you know the applicants might you know correct me if I'm correct uh, the basin and the lighting is private private entity right it's not private that is in to the track the city mm -hmm. have nothing to do with the maintenance of them at this point of time so the humidification zone, which is what disappeared because of, like Oliver mentioned, there's a lot of uh, uh, the fire department have other issues with it, and the, the applicants could not secure um, easements with the property owner, so that is gone. So there is no, no need for the landscape maintenance at this point in time. Yeah, that, that doesn't seem to answer what I'm asking. What I'm after is there, is there something in place that would provide these uh, accommodate the, the lighting in terms of maintenance for fuel modification uh, granted mr. Oliver mentioned that the, the fire department um, uh, has, has something to do with in terms of the fuel mod but we're not seeing anything uh, in place substituting these uh, removal of these requirements so I'd like to have this, some feedback uh, if not from the city engineer or, or the applicant and so before we take action on this uh, by removing this I mean granted you know this request here but remember the maintenance district is really there for erosion control beautification and some other issues in terms of property maintenance um, property valuation drainage control improvements erosion control as I, as I mentioned so there are many benefits and so what are we substituting in place of all these benefits 
So if you'd like to swear me in. <laughs> My name is Eric Cernich. I'm with Oxbow Partners. On, Let, on at this time, I'll open public comment and we'll get you sworn in, sir. Okay. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly affirm that the testimony you are about to give before this body will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, please say I do. I do. Thank you. Thank you. Can you please say your name and give your address for the tape record? So my name's Eric Cernich. I'm with Oxbow Partners. We're the owner of the, of the property. Uh, one of my partners, Lou Wynn, is here as well with me. Uh, I reside in Newport Beach. The original, we, we purchased this property almost four years ago. It came with existing conditions of approval. Uh, we've been working diligently with the city for the last three years to kind of clean things up on it. The original request for a landscape maintenance district was from the city. We were working through that with engineering. We had it approved with budgets. What has happened is the city is trying to get away from landscape maintenance districts and moving projects like this into a CFD. So what's going to happen is any of this maintenance that's going to be required for this project is going to be part of a newly created CFD for the space. In addition to that, the San Bernardino City Water District has been working with multiple property owners in the area to create another CFD for new water infrastructure that's going to be put up in this area that's, that's being created for about 360 to 500 new homes up in the area. So it's, we, didn't want the, we didn't want the CFD. This is something being imposed by the city. So any maintenance that's going to be required in the future will be covered through that, that new CFD that's going to be placed on the property. I so I think that answers the well, question. I understand. No. But so I'm asking, because we're eliminating the benefits here in, in the packet, and CFD is in the process of being formulated. So we don't have anything to ensure that these uh, issues would be resolved. So you've t you're talking about fuel modification. So there's nothing in place. I'm not seeing that once that's already been adopted in terms of CFD, we're talking about formation. I think it seems to me that we would want certain um, HOA adoption or something's already in place in front of the Planning Commission so that we can see the exchange take place in terms of removing these benefits. So y you mentioned, I believe you said, in process. I mean, that's something that maybe the city is pursuing and, may, uh, and it may not uh, come to that fruition. I don't know. Uh, but I'm just saying that in, with no replacement in terms of lighting, uh, when you say private street, and I'm not even sure if that's private street. It seems like the streets, as proposed, would later would be, um, you know, converted to the city for maintenance. So um, where are all the, how are these costs going to be um, uh, resolved? in terms of lighting, fuel modification. It's in the high fire zone. Uh, the city had um, Panorama fire in 2003 fire. We got tons uh, coming through here in, you know, from decades. And so how do we ensure the fuel mod be in place that would protect the properties? So my understanding, the fuel mod is kind of a separate issue at this point. Mm -hmm. as, as I went through and uh, worked with staff, uh, who's no longer with engineering, to get my landscape maintenance district approved. Uh, it was approved. We were waiting for the final letters from uh, Public Works. Pu Public Works direction, they changed this to a CFD. This was, not, this was not our doing. Our understanding now is the city is getting away from landscape, separate landscape maintenance districts and going to move everybody into CFDs. Well, I understand. So I don't know if I'm kind of the trial on this. As it, as it goes to my... <clears throat> my uh, fuel modification zones, I've got a couple of issues with that. I'm being asked right now to create a 100-foot defensible space on off-site property, which I don't own. And I, I can't get my neighbors to go ahead and give me uh, an ease, actually not give me, but give the city an easement for off-site fuel modification, which currently is a code enforcement issue. So I don't know. You want to? Do you want to talk about individual well, I, I, aspects of the street lighting or the street or an HOA? Because well, I, it's, there's a couple of different things happening. Right, here. and there are multiple facets in terms of what you're trying to ask for. It seems like the landscape maintenance district here, like I said, you've got fuel mod zone, you've got debris basin and access. So referring back to your map, there's a huge basin right there to, on the left uh, corner there. And so how is that basin going to be maintained? 
that correct that's lot 13 it's one acre in size and that's being maintained by the LLMD which is no longer going to be there so the CFD is going to cover that what we're working with right now with the city is creating a larger CFD that's actually going to do some of the other infrastructure so I, I don't know where this is going to fall yet from the standpoint of uh, of the streets because I, th I thought the streets were going to be turned over to the city at some point my, my, my concern is I'll do whatever the city wants at this point. The city is asked to make this change. I need some type of relief on my fuel modification issues, and I've met with uh, the current director, community director, Jeffrey Bloom, as well as uh, members of the fire department, so we're trying to work through these issues because I cannot get a defensible space easement from property that's not my property on the fuel modification. So I, I don't know if, you're, if you want to plug this into a CFD. Uh, that's not clear to me at this point. And I think there's some work that we probably need to do with staff. I came in and, and asked for an extension of time on my map of the condition for the LLMD, which is going to go to a CFD. That was purely from staff. So I'm here to do whatever makes things easier for the city at this point. Thank you. Thank you for that yep. clarity. Yep. So in the absence of a, a formal adopted CFD uh, to ensure that these things would be resolved and um, covered, I think we should, uh, or if I may suggest, um, you know, postpone that and bring that back at a later date until we can see that a formation of that CFD have been adopted or at least in draft format that to ensure that these are in place. So the field mod actually comes in twofold. Uh, the first of all is the area that which you speak of, which is outside of your boundary, which is probably in the, the mountain, the northern portion, and then also the field mod within the project site itself. I think there, there may be requirements in terms of defensible space because, you're, because these properties are up against the mountains. And so, you know, it seems to me that you're still, uh, the, the CFC is still in that motion and we don't have one in place and we're at the same time asking to re remove these benefits well, you, already. The city itself, and maybe Alex you can help me, I don't know if the city itself is going to be creating the CFD on our site specifically. I think we're going to be asked to do that as probably moving our project forward in, um, in lieu of doing the LLMD. The city council have approved and formulated the CFD so that will be an annexation to the formally formulated CFD that was done by the City Council. If I may, as a suggestion, um, I just had asked Stephanie to pass out a revised resolution that's on the next item where we have a similar situation. Um, if I may, as a suggestion, um, if we can go, if, um, if we allow us to go back and um, not back, but as, as an amendment to the conditions where we strike out landscape maintenance district and substitute it with community facilities district um, like we are going to request on the next item and, and I think that would cover what you're saying so it's at the at the end of the day it's going to be a CFD mm -hmm. um, yes that explains the connection the the direct nexus where you may have something in place of the uh, LM, LLMD and so do you see my point that you're just asking to remove it without any um, remedies. It. I'm not asking for it. Well, I'm the saying city, you, city, not in a singular. City. I'm saying plural. Okay, the as city in has the asked project. for it. I'm willing to work with the city to help facilitate the CFD because we just want to get this project built. We, we've been trying to that. build this project for almost three years now, and we just keep hitting roadblock after roadblock. Um, and from this standpoint, I need to get my map extended. I need to work with somebody at staff to get this. LLMD converted to a CFD. I also need to get some type of relief on this fuel modification on the uh, areas that are outside our property boundaries. We have no control over those property owners. Uh, that's something that I'd love the city to take that up as a code enforcement issue, which they currently do. I get my notice twice a year for weed abatement on my 18 acres. We are not up against the mountains as much as it may appear. We have a flat area up behind us. I think it's about another 40 or 50 acres. Uh, to, the, to, the, uh, to the west of us, uh, another development's going to come in. I think it's about 84 houses at some point in time. I have been able to obtain a, uh, a uh, uh, easement for the city in, on 
on behalf of the city to operate that in the event that, that there's going to be a fuel modification. To the south of me, I have a retaining wall of eight feet. I can't get those people to give me a uh, fuel uh, easement, a fuel modification easement for that area. I have been told in meetings with the uh, fire department that having that eight foot uh, space there is going to allow us to have some defensible area without that fuel modification easement. I've also got some area on the north to where we have it. Our landscaping and the original uh, approvals of the project and the condition is all fire retardant material, as well as our perimeter fences need to be high wind and fire resistant, as well as the materials for the makeup of the houses. Last thing we want to do is build a house that's going to burn down up there in a fire, and we want as much defensible space as we can get. But if, I, if I've got a property owner that has his rights and I've got my property rights, I can't make them do anything. The city, I need some help with the city on the, on the fuel modification areas. No, I understand, and I'm saying that without the fuel mod requirements, a lot of these vegetation issues could come back as a code enforcement issue. So we're not really solving anything. It just seems like we were pushing the problems up to uh, or creating more problems for code enforcement. And so uh, in lieu of the uh, replacement of fuel modification zone, um, is this something that would replace all yes. these in terms of lightings and that, fuel that, mod? That, that's correct. Yes. That's it, correct. So if, if, I, if I made the recommendation would be to um, modify on this particular resolution, which would be condition number 27, which makes reference to landscape and lighting maintenance district, that we replace that with um, community facilities district. And that, that's um, 27, and it goes from letter A through H. And so we would just go through that resol through the resolution and, and make sure we make those changes, and and that is uh, that is resolution number two thousand eight two thousand nineteen dash zero zero seven. Oliver, if I just may ask, is the uh, tentative track map that's up for uh, extension behind us? Are they going from an LLMD to a CFD as well? Correct. So yes. they have a similar situation. Yes. So has this happened before? Are we kind of the first people to go through this new city directive to get away from the LLMDs? There was one before us. That okay. was, there was one in November. That okay. Was. So what was the protocol that took place during that? I mean, we'll follow whatever protocol needs to be done. Uh, this is a condition that the city wants us to change something. Uh, from that standpoint, we want to get whatever we can get done as soon as possible so we can get developing and build houses before this market goes south again. And there's some cracks in it. So... Right. No, I, I thank you for your efforts. And I believe the resolution number uh, 2019 008 PC provided here would substitute that. Thank you. Uh, staff confirmed that, so uh, I'm good with that. Thank you. Okay, perfect. And I'm willing to meet with staff day or night to figure out how to facilitate this new CFD to move this forward. We'll make it day. Perfect. Appreciate it. Any other questions for me? Uh, thank you. I was just going to ask a question, though, uh, prior to you mentioning that you've been ready to go on this project. It looks like here we're requesting a one-year extension. Is this the first time a one-year extension has been requested? Third time. This is third, third time. time. Well, it sounds like me you're eager to build, and I think the market is red hot right now. And I would like to see staff also do what they can to help you get this thing off the ground. Uh, it's got to be pretty frustrating on your part. We've been in plan check on this since May of 2017. Yeah, that's, uh, hey, better get it while the iron's hot. <laughs> yeah. I have a question. I'm, I'm a little confused. Who confers the CFD? Who approves that? Is that the city? That's the state? Who? who? The city council. Approved. The city council. The city council. Yeah. Okay, so by making these changes then, because I think the question was asked, for giving up this, what are we getting in return? Or what are those residents going to be getting in return? That's the bottom line. And if the city council is going to do this, but it hasn't done this yet, and I think that was the concern, you know, are we, how can we approve something that we don't have yet? But by making these changes, then you, Oliver, are assuring that. That's correct. Yes. That it's going to happen. That's correct. And that those residents will then have that protection for. So there are several maps I believe we have. Is it three or four others, Elizabeth, we, we, that that will be coming back with that with the, with same, the same modification, and, and we're at this point because because um, the we have not finalized the the CFD district and how the you know there's there's elections and there, there's a process to that, 
And so um, the, the direction was as the maps come up to their expiration time that we process them, the, the, the removal of the condition at that time. So, so we don't have the applicant go through two public hearings essentially, two separate public hearings. So, so I've got a question just from the standpoint for, for me to move forward on my own CFD, the application fee is $60,000. I don't know if, if there's four or five or six other people that are doing this, if there's a way for us to kind of group these as part of a larger CFD. On, on my on-site landscape maintenance area, I may have a total of 3,000 square feet of landscaping. My areas were really small. The fuel modification defensible area was outside of what was being handled by the fuel modification or by the LLMD. So I, it just the costs are getting to be outlandish on some of this stuff. So I don't know if the city has thought how we could maybe process all of these together in a little bit larger CFD. I know that's it, been a conversation. Are, yeah, it's a conversation that we can have out of here. Okay. But you did pay for your LMD. So that is the money that you paid for year, I think, is $5,000. I'm not sure, you know, for the application. We'll find out, and then okay. we will use that money to do the CFD. Okay. It's not a $60,000 CFD. Okay. Well, no, no, that's, <laughs> but DG, FG, or whoever it is, their application fee for a CFD is $60,000? Yeah, it just, okay. a number they put there, but I forgot to take it out, okay. unfortunately. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Sorry about that. I just, I mean, I'm running out of money. No, I haven't started the project yet. It's not $60,000 for CFD. No. All right. Well, I'm here. Any other questions? Thank you for your time. So there would be, uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Oh, Chair. Sorry. Um, so there would be a resolution developed created for uh, for this. That is, that is correct. Okay. So I think what's going to happen if now I, I I think I'm seeing this a little clearer. So what's going to happen is we're going to possibly get approved tonight. Uh, conditions going to change. Now I'm going to work with staff on the CFD with maybe some other property owners and now we're going to come in front of the city council to have that CFD approved so we can do it and move forward and start our project. Correct. Okay. Clear as mud. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Are there any uh, further questions? So just, the for, so just for reassurance, um, and again, I, similar to the to the uh, what we just what I just um, had Stephanie hand out, there'll be a similar resolution that'll be prepared for this, where we will strike out um, lighting and landscape district and replace it with community facilities district, and and we would um, we would do that with the commission's um, part of their uh, amended motion to change those conditions. All right, I'll entertain a motion if there are no further questions. I'll make the motion, uh, Mr. Chairman, that um, the Planning Commission adopt, or uh, this is not going to go to uh, City Council. Correct. Okay, so that would, the Planning Commission approve, um, what is this extension of time, uh, 1808, an amendment uh, to conditions 1803 with uh, the a resolution in place for uh, a community facility for a tentative track map 16794. That would be condition 27 for clarification. Condition number 27, yes. Thank you. Do we have a second? All second. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Moving on, agenda item number nine, oh, extension yeah. of time, 18-010, an amendment to conditions, 18-04. Uh, I hereby open public hearing for addition, uh, uh, item number nine. Uh, can we please have the staff report? Of course. This is similar to the previous item, the extension of time, 18-10, um, one zero and amendment to conditions eighteen zero four is for tentative track map seventeen three twenty nine, which was originally approved by the planning commission in February of two thousand and six. Again, since that date, there had been a series of state legislation that had um, automatically extended those maps without application coming to the city. This um, this particular application before you this evening is the sixth request that the applicant will be making 
uh, for the extension. I will point out that that's the last um, request that the uh, that the applicant can make per um, per the MAP Act and and the city's development code, unless legislation you know changes that. But um, so again, um, similar to the others, th this is a six extension. Again, we're going to in this particular one, we did go through the resolution. There was a little different circumstances at the time this, uh, the staff report was prepared. So we have gone through and we've made out uh, the request to change the landscape maintenance district, landscape maintenance district to community facilities district for this subdivision. It's a total of fi approximately 55.76 acres. There'll be 94 homes, single-family residences on there. It's uh, it's north of West Myers Road, and it's east and west of Little, North Little League Drive, and it has two zones to it: res residential estate and residential low. This is a uh, 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 the uh, the zoning map. Again, the uh, the darker yellow is the, uh, the the residential low, and the and the lighter shade or the tan color is the residential estates. So essentially, the, uh, the the project covers both areas, and I should also mention that the the lot sizes are consistent with what the zone requires for that particular area or that zone. This is an aerial photograph of the uh, of the site, as you can see, it's, uh, it, it's vacant pretty much around, and there's some 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 sing you can see the single family residences that are that are down below. This is the exhibit of the of the map as approved by the Planning Commission. And again, we um, I, I did pass out a um, um, during the other the, the other meeting the revised resolution, where we are requesting that the Planning Commission adopt resolution 2019-008, finding that the project is categorically exempt, and approving extension of time 18-10 and amendment to conditions 18-04 for the map, subject to the findings and the recommended conditions of approval. Again, the handout does show the uh, the red line and strike out um, to include and, and, and delete the uh, the landscape main district and the uh, community facilities district. I'd be glad to answer any questions, and I believe the applicant is here as well. Thank you. Questions? Yeah. So Oliver, um, I know this is similar to the previous mm -hmm. one. I just kind of want to put it out there. That what's the? Uh, is there a, maybe like a provide uh, if you could provide. Or maybe the city engineer, like a summary synopsis. See, um, LMD, LMD versus like a, a CFD, community facilities. It seems to me that an LMD would be project specific, whereas community facility, in terms of revenue, in terms of site maintenance, whereas CFD would be able to allow cities to take the revenues and place it elsewhere in terms of its priority. I think that was generally generally the idea. What, what, what you're thinking? What we have out there in the area, as you as you know, there's a lot of these maps that have been approved a while back, and 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 now that they're 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 all anxious and ready to to proceed and start start construction, I think they, um, and, and and frankly because of the cost that's associated with the, with the improvements, I think part of it um, also involves kind of the sharing sharing of costs and, and improvements sort of thing. There's another item that's that there that's under discussions with the water department as it relates to providing water services up in that area, and so there's a couple of parallels, um, you know, on that. But I think that um, I think it was the, the from the finance department they they've concluded and recommended to the city council that from a financial standpoint that um, CFDs make more more sense in budgeting monitoring and, and such as, as, as opposed to the landscape maintenance districts and so that was it was it was really more of a of a procedural um, and a philosophical change if you will between the two understood that it would give the, or allow the city to gain advantage in terms of m managing and monitoring but um, what I'm saying is site specific in terms of LLMD would be narrow in, in terms of scope in terms of applying the the, the the dollars that's been sort of reserved for site improvements, erosion controls, and, and other things, lighting, et cetera, whereas CFD would be a bit more um, applicable in terms of application using the revenues uh, reserved 
even though it's set up for this area that it may be used for other areas. Am I mistaken? Yeah, yes, uh, the yes. CFD will have boundaries and the, and the revenue generated from the we'll homeowners on their property taxes must be used within the within designated the zone or boundary. One of the most significant differences between an LMD and the CFD is just the annual cost of levying on a, on a, a maintenance district. So under Proposition 218, you must demonstrate what's called a special benefit. So you must demonstrate that any improvement for which you're using these dollars is somehow improving the property value. And that's not what we are necessarily looking at when we're looking at some of the safety concerns, some of the environmental impacts. So a CFD gives them much more discretion um, in terms of how the dollars can be spent. And it's, but it is restricted, so the city cannot collect CFD revenue um, from this parcel area and go use it somewhere else. They must be able to demonstrate that they are improving that. Um, the CFD requires property owner approval um, by a vote. Um, the LLMD has a different process, so I, I believe that staff's recommendation is um, more, with the times, more modern approach to um, improving some of these areas and having long-term revenue sources. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Does the Commission have any further questions? At this time, I'll open public comments for agenda item number nine. Is there anyone from the public wishing to speak? I see no one wishing to speak from the public. We, were gonna, we will close public hearing items for agenda item number nine. Uh, if there are no more questions or comments from the Commission, I will entertain a motion. If I may, to ensure that um, the, uh, the resolution has been uh, amended. In that, as it relates to condition number 27, and and those conditions would be from condition 27N through T. I'd like to make a motion approving agenda item number nine, including the modifications as read into the record for number 27, at, uh, items number N through T. Uh, do we have a second? I'm sorry, Chair. If I could have actually... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, okay. We were presented with a few letters of, uh, from the public and everything of kind of some problems that were arising with this project uh, that they've been holding on to the lands and everything, and I know you don't want to build when, you know, the market's not really high or anything like that. However, maintenance on the land itself, I know that we're going now into the CFD rather than the LLMD. Um, however, they seem to be having some issues with the homes that are, you know, bordering this, uh, this project. Uh, they seem to be having kind of different things. If I could have a little more elaboration of what's happening there. I'm not aware of any active um, code enforcement cases on that um, on that particular property, property or in that general area. I know that um, that with the uh, with the county um, taking over the, uh, the the fire, I know that they've been dealing with the you know kind of the, the fuel modification stuff and, and, and clearing you know to prevent the fires and things. And um, you know we we have not necessarily been made aware of any any issues as it relates to. You know, on you know, on-site maintenance. You know, if you will, um, I know it was raised by by a couple of the residents here. Um, mm -hmm. We could certainly look into that, and, and I believe that the the applicant owner is here. Okay. If you want to ask any questions of, of them, but um, you know, it's um, I, I you know it, it's see it appears that the people that are that the residents up there in the Vermont area, you know, they're they're anxious for things to happen, but yes. there's there's been a lot of um, infrastructure that they've been waiting for. You know, um, you know, roads, uh, you know, and, and, and utilities and those kinds of things, water and sewer, um, and, and drainage, and so I think it's, um, I think there's just a, a need to make the commission aware that, you know, these projects moving forward will help um, get those, get that infrastructure in, in place to to kind of alleviate some of these some of these problems. Right. Um, I know. Just you know trying to play nice with your neighbors and everything, make sure, you know, keep everyone nice and happy. Um, maybe going, having a meeting with the concerns of, like, maybe the neighborhood, um, just to make sure that their voice is heard and felt, like that, that if any repairs are needed, that they be met as well, that maybe going... So what, what I could commit to doing is to, um, to um, speak with our director mm -hmm. 
and and suggest I, I know that there's the uh, there's the the neighborhood community up there and and maybe a, I know they have their monthly the regular monthly meetings and um, we can kind of raise you know raise this um, discussion item not necessarily as it relates to this particular project which is kind of a, the global of, of what we're doing maybe and you know ex share with them what's going what's happening some of these projects that are now starting to move forward yeah and some of the things that we're working on with with both public works and the water department and in terms of the infrastructure that will go up there and and um, we've attended those meetings before and so we'll, I'll, I'll look into doing that as well that'd be perfect yeah I just want to make sure that uh, the residents that they know that we're not just dismissing their concerns and they're sending letters to us to to bring this up um, so that you know the owners know that people are you know their homes are right there okay thank you you're welcome is the owner or the developer here Yes. If you will, please. Have you been sworn in, sir? No. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly affirm that the testimony you are about to give before this body will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, please say, I do. I do. Thank you. The statement on in here says, we welcome GFR to the neighborhood but requests respect to current residents by keeping all their land holdings with their co-owners and investors in good condition and not detrimental to the neighborhood. Were you aware that they had concerns? Because they even go to great lengths that they themselves have formed uh, volunteer groups and that's probably through the neighborhood association out there to clean up these properties and everything at no cost to the city, at no cost to the developers. So they're asking the question isn't the owner and or the developer responsible for maintaining even though in a period of extension of time before they are building so my question is are you aware that they have these concerns no it's the first I've ever heard okay I've had that probably for 15 years a copy <laughs> yeah I've we'll had that sure probably that, for 15 okay. years no one's ever called me we do the standard uh, weed abatement you know every year twice a year um, I've had that probably for quite a while and this is the first I've ever heard the schools to the south of us and there's no homes to the east of us or to the north of us there's two homes to the west of us on one acre parcels um, so that's who surrounds me two houses so uh, when you talk about I'm, I'm not understanding uh, we do the weed abatement every like I said twice a year and never heard uh, you know it's in its natives uh, the, w the way it's been for thousands of years I suppose you know. well the notice that is given here is really a two-part one is the city needs to follow up on it code enforcement I don't know public works or whatever to make sure that these lots don't have debris and it's not an unsightly condition for the neighborhood and then the other applies to you as the owner and so I think you know they make a statement that they do want the development we welcome GFR to the neighborhood but they they feel that they're being disrespected in their own home it sounds like because there is trash and litter and so forth and they're asking the question who can do something about it the city the owner well, or both of you together if, you know if anyone's dumping on the site which people have the minute I see the dumping we I just send you know our men and they mm -hmm. pick it up and get rid of it okay and so I've never had code enforcement ever call us for that you know mm -hmm. the county's taken over the weed abatement um, so we just adhere to what they want us to do but if there is trash there and we go up there at least you know twice well, a week I think you made a good statement when I asked you you know were you aware of their concerns and you said no but now you have now you are aware because you have and as Oliver has suggested now now the time is ripe to um, get together and talk about it and and see if some resolution can happen I, I don't think there's a problem but I will go there again I was up there last week there's no debris mm -hmm. anywhere um, it's just still in its native well it's just good to remember that these people live there all the time that is their neighborhoods I know you said you may not go down there as often and maybe they see things that somebody else doesn't see and so there are some concerns and it would probably do good to get into a conversation with them and if Oliver can help be the broker and steer, steer you to where you have to talk it's simple, as well as whatever me. city departments also have to be involved I, I say uh, suggest uh, whoever they are let me have their name, uh, name and number and I'll give them a call you know there should only be two neighbors there and I know who they are so well actually I know one of them 
Um, but I've never had a call from those people at all. So let me, let me call them. I'll, I'll find out. And by the way, Oliver, you said we had six extensions. I mean, we had we had done six. I don't think we did six. I think we had only did four. But I could be wrong because we we'll deal with that later. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. So from I was going through the letter sent from uh, Hank Mitchell, and they were saying that their re request to the city is to require all vacant land herein to be maintained clear of debris uh, and dumped of trash and household and other items from this day, January 8, 2018, moving forward until owner actually starts development. Is there any mechanism or co co uh, component that we can attach to this condition of approval in order to ensure that the lot is kept cleanly and in order for the residents in that area moving forward until the project is commenced. And, and uh, again, um, Sonia Carvalho, I can answer that for you in terms of the development code already requires these lots to be maintained, so it really is a code enforcement issue. Um, and if complaints are received, then they will send code enforcement officers out. Um, if the debris is not cleared with, or the dumping or whatever is on the property is not cleared in an appropriate amount of time, we can always go out and abate the um, items ourselves and impose liens against the property. That is our process. So um, I don't, there's no need for the Planning Commission to impose any additional conditions. I think it's been brought to our attention that some neighbors feel it's a problem and it will be communicated to the code enforcement to take a more regular look at this property to make sure that it is maintained. Perfect. Excellent. Thank you. So we can ask you to talk to someone over at Code Enforcement. Please I follow will. up. Something yeah, I'm working has been brought to our very attention. closely with them at now, and um, we are having weekly meetings with them, so I will make sure to bring up this property and make sure that it is being um, enforced appropriately. Perfect. Thank you. And if we can also send them a, a letter or a copy of Mr. Hank Mitchell's concerns when we forward that recommendation, that would be perfect. Um, does the commission have any other further questions or comments for the applicant or staff at this time? All right. I'm going well, to. I appreciate what you said because that's absolutely true. Code enforcement, if there was something out there, would come and tell us about it. But um, again, I haven't had any code enforcement issues in 15 years. So, and before we do the development and before we start de development, yes, I got to clear the debris. But whenever there's any kind of debris, like once in a while I find somebody drop a mattress on there, we just pick it up and get it out of there because I can't have it there. It just it just compounds itself. So we've always picked up our stuff. I know Hank Mitchell. I've known him for 20 years. And he, uh, I won't. Bottom line is we take care of our property, so we'll take care of it, especially before we build. It'll be off. All right? Any Thank you, questions? sir. Does the commission have any further questions or comments for the applicant or staff at this time? All right, we're going to close public comments and I will entertain a motion to approve agenda item number nine with the included modifications. Second. Oh. Did you make the motion? I'm oh, no, sorry. I, I was oh, no. writing off your comment. We need a motion. <laughs> okay, I'll make the motion Excellent. to approve item number nine with additional comments uh, in terms of the requirements uh, by staff and to, um, pursuant to code enforcement uh, uh, requirements. I'll second that. All right. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Planning Commission reports and announcements. Uh, does the Commission have any reports or announcements? I'd like to wish everyone a happy new year. Um, <laughs> right? <laughs> happy new year. I look forward to working with you all moving forward. Commissioner Wilbert? This is uh, kind of for my own information, and it kind of falls what we're talking about now, maybe out of this order. But on May the 8th, we had a meeting and we approved. Uh, a uh, apartment project converting uh, 15 or four 15 uh, apartments out of a, an office project. We didn't approve it then. We put it off to June the 12th after 
they met with the neighborhood with Captain Lawhead. And it appeared when they presented it to us, everybody liked it, everybody was in agreement. So help me. Um, when we, when the planning commission approves something, does it always have to go to the city council? No. No, it doesn't. Procedurally, um, the only things that go to council are general plan amendments and zone change changes. Um, in that particular thing, we have the uh, the new ordinance was the adaptive reuse ordinance, and the way that that ordinance was written, it states that the council has the final action on that, and so that the planning commission is only a recommend recommending body to that. Other than that, any any other items that you have before you, conditional use permits, development permits, extension of times, um, those those all end here unless they are appealed. That's okay. That was the, the next part. If they're appealed, that's correct. Um, so our the last city council meeting, this came up for for vote, and that was uh, well we approved it in June, and that's six almost six months. Where did this get lost uh, between here and council? Well, it did go to the council, I believe, a couple of times. Um, it was it was continued, and then we had the holidays and right. and, and all all that in between. Um, and there was and there was direction from the council for the uh, for the applicant to to meet with the residents again for a, so, a second time uh, probably sec probably a third or fourth time and so um, it was a it was a highly discussed item if you if you if you if you have trouble sleeping at night and want to look back at the tape um, <laughs> it, it it lasted quite a lot quite a quite a while because we're we're not aware of all that then what we, we're aware of what was given to us right. Uh, Okay, that answered my question. I was just trying to figure out why that long length of time uh, to get something like this through, which on the surface seemed to be pretty simple. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a question. At, um, at the last city council meeting, there was a big discussion as they were passing this item that you were talking about, how uh, we need to upgrade the general plan. And so I got on the internet afterwards to look up our general plan. And if this is the one, the right one, it was on the city's website, was passed when Honorable Judith Weiss was mayor. So obviously we need to revise and update because there was this whole big discussion about how much affordable housing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. My question is, when it comes to that, if I guess it has to be directed by the council and the city manager to get it going and so forth, does this department planning as well as planning commissioners have some input? Very little. Very no, I'm, little. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No. <laughs> actually, actually um, <laughs> quite contrary. The, the, the commission will probably spend the most time on that document. Mm -hmm. um, the, it, it will... It will it will go to the council once it is made, once it's gone through its process through the commission. Um, there will also be what's called a uh, general plan advisory committee, where the where the, where the city council members will appoint um, members of the community, uh, both residents and, and business owners, um, to uh, for input, if you will. Um, so so it'll 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 be um, a process, a, a long process. I, I I've worked on these in other in other communities. Um, many times they. The planning commission will will appoint a, a subcommittee, if you will, maybe two or three of you, or, or maybe a, a, a few subcommittees, so that you could rotate attending these various um, community meetings, if you will, um, um, so that you're part of that of that vetting process and 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 and, and the charrette process, whatever, what you know, kind of that whole public participation um, component, as those. Um, individual sections, you know, if you if you write up on the document, it has right. it has several uh, elements. You know, have circulation, land use, things. noise, all those things. Each one of those um, components are are, are quite uh, quite thorough and, and, and involve quite 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 a bit of, of effort. And so, if you re, if you recall, um, kind of the exercise that we were going through with our development code, where where we where, where we've gone back and forth and. And um, some of you have been in those in those um, business meetings, if you uh, working group meetings, where where you take sections at a time and just kind of, um, you know, dissect them, digest them, whatever the whatever the case is. And so it is a, 
it is a thorough process and so um, it's one that normally and you'll hear all this next week at the council meeting um, it, it's a process that's uh, realistically it's going to take somewhere about about three to four years here to complete mm -hmm. and so um, so yeah so so be ready for for, for okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm <laughs> ready. When do we start? Um, and going through the document, because it, it is a long document, there's excellent parts to it and so forth, but then there are also parts, because it's really a two-parter. How much input in the design and, and who it involves in crafting a document that, as it is, the general plan for the city, which a lot of discussion came up. We need to update it. We need to do this. We need to all kinds of, you know. And uh, the second part is educating those people that will have a portion of it. Those of us here on this dais, those of us in building, those of us in planning, those of us in code enforcement, we all have to be informed about this because there were even items on there. And I read through it and I said, this has never come before this planning commission. There's an item on there about neighborhood a neighborhood association would be, um, re we would receive comments about the design or of the infrastructure within their neighborhood, entrance ways and exit ways and whatever. And I've been involved with neighborhood associations for a while. We've never gotten that knock on the door. So it's a, like a two-part thing. You know, it's not just designing it with everybody's expertise providing input, but I also see it as important in educating everybody so that we're all, so that when things come before us here, does this fit the city's general plan? And when you guys are making your reports and everything, does this fit the city's general plan as we put them forward? Correct. You know, and, so and, thank and, you. And that's actually part of, the, part of the process will be the education. You know, you'll, you'll have a general plan 101, 102, and 103 session. Where, <laughs> where, where, where essentially it, it, this is what it is, and it, it really is to try to get everyone on the same page, the, the 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 same level of understanding of what the process is, what the what the what the various elements and 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 what's included, and so we're all imagining the same picture. That's kind of what Chantal and Elizabeth are tired of me saying that. Though the, you know, if you have ten people, the goal is to get them all imagining the same picture. And, and that's what we will um, work to accomplish in, 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 on the front end of this when we, as we start putting these groups together, as we start um, meeting with the commission on, you know, on, on initiating it so that now everyone's on the same page um, when, when we start moving forward on it. And, and, and you're right. I mean, it's when we have a document that's a decade or so, um, you know, old, you know, and, 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 there, and, there's, and, and things have changed, you know, since it was adopted, you know, and so... Um, there were a few references that were made, and that it, um, it, 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 it's time, and um, you know it's it's one thing that you it, like I said you'll 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 be more than involved. Yes, sir. Yeah, I think about three years ago, I believe, I attended an open session with the uh, commission. I was not a member then. Um, it was open to the public, and it was discussion of uh, identifying zones, changing zones. Uh, because of mm -hmm. what we're just talking about, mm -hmm. and that was about three three years ago, I believe. Um, uh, pretty lengthy. I don't know if it, these were just um, suggestions or whether they once that meeting was over, it did, disappeared. Or but there was a real effort to. Uh, it, it was for suggestions. Uh, many times, us planners, we come up with ideas. You know, and we, and we have to run it. You know, you, you, you really you really need to go get the pulse of the community. Uh, you know, residents, businesses, you know, you know, and so forth. And and what we what we see or have heard being done in other communities or, or other parts of the state, kind of a thing. And we, you know, hey, you know, this maybe would work here. But um, some things are are accepted, some things aren't. You know, um, you know whether we should, you know, what kind of commercial uses we should allow, um, what kind of densities we should allow for residential properties. You know, again, we we have ten of us here. We might have a different opinion. You, you know, on that, and so, so, so that's why these these exercises take a while, because it's it, it's building consensus, you know, and 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 that and, and that takes time. Yeah, just one other thing that I just want to mention, and maybe this is directed to the chair. 
um, all of these things are really important and I, I think having the conversation is really important, transparency and education and getting you informed. I do want to just be a little bit mindful of our requirements under the Brown Act that on your agenda this is a time for announcements, things that you might want to say you attended a neighborhood meeting. If you have these types of questions, my recommendation would be to ask staff to come back and put on as an agenda item, you know, informational session. If you have a, like you're, you're raising that issue and I think staff would say, okay, maybe I need to, to agendize that. But I just want to be careful that we're in compliance with the Brown Act because the announcements portion really is kind of a portion where you might ask a simple question, but when we start to have a, com a lengthy conversation on one topic, we're probably rubbing up against those requirements. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I always am the bearer of bad news, but I, that's my job and I want to make sure I do it well. <laughs> you know, I most of us here spent two hours a lecture on that plus another one put on by Stephen Graham. That's why you have to do it every two years. <laughs> if, if I could make a comment too, with reference to the general plan and um, the ordinances and so on, uh, what was it, two years ago we revisited the sign code and that was really necessary because um, technology, technology has changed so much in that industry. And so uh, there were a lot of changes made to the ordinance and also the de de development code completely. Thank you. Any other announcements from the commission? Mr. Director, do you have a report? I um, just have one item and Stephanie would like to make a couple of announcements as well. Um, you may have noticed that we changed the format a little bit on the staff report. And so um, it was kind of a work in progress and um, if, if, if it's okay, if, um, if you have suggestions and maybe you can you, you call me or email me on, on what, what, it, what is helpful, you know, I, I, we try to make it as, uh, so it's as clear as possible and so that the information is there and so if you have any suggestions, by all means, um, give me a call or, or shoot me an email and uh, like I said, we're just, you know, trying to spice it up a little bit, I guess. Mm -hmm. Stephanie? Real quick, just two announcements. Um, a reminder that this Thursday is the Commissioner's Dinner at 6 p.m. So for those of you who are attending, just a reminder, and we're happy to see you there, Oliver and I will both be in attendance. Um, also, I wanted to make the Commission aware um, we're approaching our 2019 San Bernardino Arts Fest uh, March 16th from 11 to 7, a similar format to previous years. It'll be held at the San Manuel Stadium again in conjunction with the school district, uh, with different community groups, um, community artists. I can go ahead and send out a flyer to let everybody know about the event. That way if you have um, people that you know of, students in classes that would like to participate and attend, they can. Uh, there'll be a link in there for the application. Um, so if you have questions about the event, please let me know. But otherwise, I hope you all can attend and I hope you all can send out the application to those who you think might be interested. Thank you. Thank you. All right, at this time, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. <laughs> we have a motion. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries unanimously. Everyone have a nice evening. Thank you.